Hi everybody, Chelsea Odom here in our gallery space uh, with two of our Waste to Wonder artists. We have Mei Ling Pao and Eric Marcus and they're going to talk with you a little bit about their piece in our exhibition. So the, the titles of the masks, the top one is Colombina Inamorada. Um, this goes back into the, all the theater, way back the theater days. Um, it's in Dallas, I think. And then the green one is Scaramouche Verde. And so um, we could actually start talking about where, why we made these. Um, this was for, I was actually for Continuum, for Trina and Anthony in, what, two years ago? So two years ago, uh, when they had it over in uh, City of Lakes, Rosemary Square, so we created it for that for that show. And the inspiration was um, it's a what, like, like in the, like when they do that in Italy, the masquerade. Yes. Yeah, I didn't see you. So yeah, you should talk about that more. But basically, there are specific characters that are always represented in these masquerades, and so we had picked. Two specific ones, and so that's what the inspiration was for the mask. Um, and so that's why they have those specific names. Um, Characters, yeah, that's right. It's been a while, I forgot. <laughs> and um, so we created it out of cardboard, and they are pretty fun to make. The, we work a lot with cardboard, and the way that that started is because um, for one of our daughter's birthday, we decided to create a piñata for her because she wanted something specific. And so we made it and it just turned out that we really enjoyed the medium and working with the paper mache. Um, so since then, we've, we've continued working with them. Um, so these were made with the cardboard, paper mache, and then for some of the details, um, like the line work, it's actually hot glue. And um, that took a little while to get used to. Once we got going with the hot glue, it actually turned out to be really fun. Um, on this one, I, I went back and painted the hot glue with like a copper acrylic paint and gold acrylic paint. So that, that was really nice. So really most of it is upcycled materials except for um, the hot glue and then the little gems and then the little the feather-like things are actually leaves, but... Well they, were, well, they were from something else that we had used before, and we just painted over them or whatever. Yeah, we had gotten these for another project, you're right, I don't know where it is, and so then we reused them. Oh, actually, I think we were making centerpieces, and then mm -hmm. we reused them for the masks, so they're actually yeah. even more yeah, <laughs> upcycled we, than I, I remember. We had jumped into sculpture, which she was mentioning, because years ago we had done um, we did that the piñata for a kid. It was at the time we were just doing computer work, like just sitting in front of the screen and nothing but design, um, which is fun. But we're more hands-on, and we missed getting our hands dirty. So right when we and this was years ago, right when we started back on that, we just never left it. So we started doing all these um, paper mache sculptures, and um, that's why we started using. We use cardboard for me, and so I was called the poor man's marble. It's just so easy to work with, and it's so beautiful at the end. You know, when you're working dimensionally, you know, we get hard, you can get cardboard anyway for free, and so the material cost is always low. And as long as you're not afraid to mold it and fold it and mess with it, you know, you can create anything. So we do a bunch of different things, not just masks, so it's just all the sculptures and stuff. People are impressed every time when they're like, well, what are these made out of? And I was like, they're just, you know, cardboard and paper mache, and they're always blown away. So I think uh, being able to use perhaps the simplest or cheapest material and really transform it into something that looks high end. I think that that's a perfect analogy, the poor man's marble. <laughs> How do you think about your art practices effect on the environment? Is that something you think about regularly? I think because we work with paper mache, that's something that's always been in the back of our minds that um, we actually feel good about the fact that we try to re um, reuse materials. Um, you know, and sometimes it ends up being more than just newspaper and cardboard and we use lids or if we use some random objects. Yeah, plastic. Um, yes, plastics and different things. Um, 
I think that that's always something that is in the back of our minds and we actually feel good that we're, we're reusing materials when we work on these sculptures. What made you both want to be artists? Um, I think for me, uh, I don't remember any point where it was like a decision that was made. I just, uh, I just remember always drawing and painting. So I guess I was always in, um, in that path to become an artist. Um, yeah, for me, I, I, uh, I remember as a kid, I, was, I didn't think I was an artist. I just knew that people who I was. Um, you know, I have one way I put it to my kids is that uh, I had told them before, I, this was some talk we were having, I don't remember when, but it was before I was a father, before I, you know, before I'm a husband, before I was a, a boy, I was an artist. That's just what I always knew myself to be. And then, you know, uh, I mean, then people started asking me, what do you want to be? You know, what do you mean, what do you want to be? I am an artist, you know. Learning, of course, technique and stuff as you grow, but that's what I am. It's not like I'm going to retire from it. Definitely. I think as artists, uh, it can be involved in a career and money making, but it's also just part of yeah, who you are. Yeah. Um, how do these masks relate to the other work that you guys do? For, for me, the masks, um, I don't know if it has to do with Mexican heritage, but I think we Mexicans, we have this infatuation with masks and, and Faces, not in a, not in a negative connotation of two faces, but just I don't know. There's something. There's always been some blending. A lot of the, like the you know the lucha libre stuff, the Mexican wrestlers and stuff, the masks. That's a huge thing. That's always been part of our culture. Um, uh, they have the dead, we have the skulls, and we have all these different things representing loved ones, etc. So for me, I guess maybe it's ingrained that way. But I've always loved the ideas of masks. Um, always, always. So when this project came along, I loved the idea. It's great job. <laughs> Is there anything else you would like the audience to know? Mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> Not really. Well, I thank you both so much uh, for coming and being part of this exhibition. And we hope everybody at home comes to see all the artwork in person uh, while it is up until March uh, 11th. Thank you very much. Thank you.